response on a Monday night and here at our Bible study. I congratulate each of you for coming and I do appreciate you coming and being here with us. And we're going to have a great Bible study because the presence of the Lord will assist us and help us and the Holy Ghost will let us feed from his word. And that's what it's about. Feeding from His Word. His Word. The Word of God is unlike any other Word. No other Word can come near the Word of God. It's unique in its setting because it is the direct spoken message of God to man. And uh, been studying in the book of Genesis. We're going to pray and ask the Lord to help us. We're going to deviate a little bit tonight in another subject area. Um, let's uh, thank God for Shirley Burton coming through her surgery today. Amen. Yes. And she's uh, doing good. I was up to see her after my wife spent. Uh, I, I appreciate my wife being there, taking. Um, my place. Well, I had the service for Brother Hank's uh, mother today, and we thank God for that service here at 11, in which I felt a great comfort of the Holy Spirit. And um, I know that God did comfort the hearts of the shop family, the parish family, and related members of the family. And it's great to see the courage that Hank has. Being here tonight, he never stayed home and said, "My mother uh, left today as far as her service." But he realizes the truth. He knows the truth, Amen. and he knows that she is not in that house that went out to Skyway. That's right. um, as Brother Wedderburn said here over the weekend, the soul of the spirit does not go <coughs> these various plots of ground select on this earth. The only thing that goes there is the house. Like the, the Lord just said, it's enough. So we thank God for that. Mm -hmm. We thank God for all the other help that he's giving each one. And we pray that God will uh, go with Brother and Sister Wetterman home today, back to California. They should be probably getting near home by now. So we'll continue to pray for them. I know each one of you, I do, I'm sure you do, we all have individual areas where that we need God to continually answer us, help us, give us strength. There's not a day that goes by that I don't need that. Give me this day my daily bread, I pray. Give us this day our our daily bread. And uh, so we need the Word of God, we need the strength of God, and we want to pray for God's people, because God's family is living in the world, and they're subject to the attacks of Satan. The book of Revelation tells us Satan was cast down into the earth, and uh, the Bible, the Apostle Peter said, he goeth about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And that's really quite an understanding to know that your adversary, the devil, goes about every day looking for someone that's weak enough to hand devour the strong. You know, the lion of the forest doesn't devour the strong. The strong gets away. The strong combats. It's the weak animals of the forest the lion attacks. And Satan attacks the weakness of man with the bow, seeking whom he may devour, that he can just absolutely say, I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. You know, put his paws upon us and say, I've got you. But as long as we're strong in the Lord and the power of his might, I do not believe Satan can conquer he cannot conquer a strong child of God. 
so we want to pray for God's people that they can be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh, why don't we do that right now and uh, ask God to help each one. Um, go with Marty May um, in the morning, uh, that is Wednesday morning, yes, sir. Um, when he goes back into surgery in Chan's Hospital in Gainesville. And uh, let's pray. Is everything all right, Sister Dolores? I got my hands full. All right. Brother John will help you there. And we'll pray. Let's pray for Sister Dolores. And, uh, you know, she's dealing with her husband. Yes, she is. Brother Clyde, his mind is affected with the Alzheimer's uh, illness that afflicts people as they grow older. And uh, he's. Uh, he, he's to have our compassion, and the family is to have our compassion. Yes, amen. We pray for them right now. Oh, God. Father, we, we're going to come before Jesus, you right Jesus, now, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. We, we take this need of Clyde and Dolores and the family. And whatever Clyde is going through right now, Lord, uh, reach into the recesses of his mind and help him. Help Dolores. Oh God, they need you. The human mind, when it's not in its place, is a terrible place for a man to be and encounter those about him. Holy Spirit, right now, come down, come down upon Brother Clyde. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, we withstand the enemy, we withstand the enemy, we will not let the enemy triumph tonight, we push back Satan, the adversary, the roaring lion, as a roaring lion, oh God, we push him back. We resist him. We resist him in every affliction, every need, every hurt, every pain, every sorrow, every one of the children of God that is going through a rough place. Some of God's family doesn't know where the next meal is coming from. Some doesn't know, Lord, if they'll have strength to rise out of bed in the morning. <coughs> Oh, God, help us. Oh, God, help us. We plead the blood. We plead the blood of Christ. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. Plead the blood. <coughs> Hallelujah. Jesus of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. Lord, you can sanctify us. You can set us apart. The enemy cannot reach us. The enemy cannot touch us. The enemy cannot come near our house. Because we put the fences, we put the walls up. We refuse to hear the voice of discouragement, the voice of fear, the voice of oppression. We refuse to hear it. We will not be subject to it. We will not be subject to it. We will not be subject to sickness. We will not be subject to depression. We resist it. We resist anything negative coming into our mind, our heart. The negative spirit tells us we'll be failures, but that's not true. That's a false statement from the devil. We're God's children. We can be superior in every way, in every way. Oh, Jesus. 
praise your name. Praise your name. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Make us broken vessels, tender vessels. Let us live in the sunshine. Oh, praise your name. Oh, praise your name. Praise you, Lord. <coughs> Lord, we just want to praise you. We can't praise you enough. We can't liberate <coughs> ourselves enough. every problem, every burden, every issue, Lord. We come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find help in the time of need. Trusting you. Trusting you. Trusting you with all the problems. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Thank you Jesus. George, God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, my Lord. Yes. Uh, I feel in my spirit that we need to pray for uh, people that are lonely. You know there are a lot of lonely people. Lonely. That's what's in my spirit. Lonely. If you've never been alone, if you've always had a mate, or if you've lost, you know, if you've had people around you all the time, then you can't feel that loneliness. But there is a lot of lonely people that we need to pray for, that we need to just to recognize the loneliness in people and have compassion for that loneliness. No. I think that's a worthy request. I've been praying recently about um, establishing a ministry in the church for people that just feel alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, let them be under guidance from an elder, one of the chosen elders, capable of just sitting and being a guide, being a, not teaching or instructing or saying a lot, but there they should be. But most of all, for them to be able to speak to one another and have a, an outreach in their spirit for each other in prayer, identifying that segment, that part of the church, identifying that part of the church as needing the ministry of comfort. The ministry of comfort. And just see how God would help us. Because that is loneliness, severe loneliness, not normal loneliness. Not, not just feeling alone for a moment, for a day, for a week, perhaps, as well, for a moment, for a day. Feeling alone because you're not with someone that they be away from you for the period of time. Now, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about deep, severe psychosis of loneliness that becomes an illness. And it does become an illness. And it should be recognized in August. I think Jesus recognized it in his ministry. And that's why he went to people that he did. 
He chose the outcast. He spent a good deal of his time with the forbidden ones. Pardon me? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, Matthew 11, 28, 29. Come unto me, all of you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my servitude, my yoke, my servitude upon you. And learn of me, because I'm meek and lowly, and you're going to find rest for your soul. So, you know, I think we should recognize that I, I'm going to give that thought. And let's pray for the people that are truly lonely in our midst. And there is an illness in our society right now. Um, it's amazing. Do you realize that since the Iran-Iraq war, the Iran-Afghanistan war, that one soldier a day has committed suicide, taken their life of the United States military, one a day. For every day, there's another soldier who takes his life. <laughs> Uh, more than the casualties. Now more than the casualties on the battlefield. Um, in the athletic world, where they make half million, million dollars, two million, five million, ten million, fifteen million contracts now in the professional athletic world. There are two suicides a month among NFL, NHL, National Hockey League, National Football League. An outstanding player this afternoon didn't show for training camp, paying him a large sum of money. Graduated from, um, he was in the University of South Carolina. and. Highly sought athlete, um, played for Steve Spurrier, and uh, had everything to live for, it seemed. They found him in his car, dead from a self-inflicted wound in Tampa, 20-some years, age, 25 years old. So man has an illness, doesn't he? Yes, he does. They may be laughing and gay, and there may be the Disney Worlds and the Las Vegas Strip and mm -hmm. all of that, Times Square, New York. But man has a deep illness. You know why he's a, he feels that? I believe it's because he's separated from his God. Yes. And that's where the church must bring forth new ministries. To try to get people that are separated from their God. We can't do that in a two hour service alone on Sunday or a service Sunday night. We must, as I said last night, rearrange our thinking, rearrange our church, rearrange our outreach. Because you cannot do it in those few hours we have. He has a deep illness. Many people are afflicted with this. Many people. It's not just a little bit, you know. And man needs to get back to his God. And you, you show me a closely related child of God to their God and to the Holy Spirit. Come on. And I'll show you a person that can handle life as it is. Amen. Amen. They can do it. So I really want you to pray about that because I'm really, I'm really concerned. I'm really pondering. The Lord, show me what to do, and I'll do it. I'll initiate it. I'll push volunteers into it. I'll, I'll open the doors and windows of the church as wide as I can open them. I'll start a hundred new ministries if I can do that to reach the lost, the weary, and the dying because they're everywhere. All right.
thank you for that need, that request. I think what we're going to do is deviate a little bit tonight in, um, in our study from the, the straight line of thought in Genesis. We're into the uh, nearing the third chapter of Genesis. And we'll pick that back up again. Um, but uh, let's take the subject of, um, I think I'll start with the subject of establishing that man sins by virtue of the fact he is man and that no man is exempt from this. Second Chronicles 6 and 36, and we'll go down through a medley of scriptures here. Um, Second Chronicles 6 and 36. Um, the scripture said, if they sin against thee, Verse 36, Second Chronicles, 6th chapter. If they sin against thee, that is God, for there is no man, there is no man which sinneth not. And thou be angry with them and deliver them even before their, over before their enemies. And they carry them away captives unto a land far off or near. Um, no man sinneth not. And then go from Second Chronicles 6 and 36 to Ecclesiastes 7 and 20. The book of Ecclesiastes 7 and 20. And pick up uh, again uh, what the book of Ecclesiastes has to say. In verse 20 of the seventh chapter, remember Second Chronicles said, There is no man that sinneth not. Verse 20, For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not, not a just man. Not one man was above sin on the earth at that time. These scriptures establish the fact that sin is such an illness that it grips every man and every woman and all mankind in its clutches and has has, but does not now. At this present time, these two scriptures I've read does not apply. They applied them to the Old Testament period. They're not completely applicable now because there are men and women that have lived on the earth without sin committed, deliberate sin. I'm not talking about living in the nature of sin because we all are sinners by nature. I'm talking about presumptuous, planned, conceived, contrived sin. Uh, there are people that have lived above